The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. For those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will perish just as they did. Then he told this parable, A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear Professor Adam, I hope this email finds you well. I'm writing to you tonight. I'm writing to you today to request an extension for the assignment that's due tomorrow. I've spent hours working on it and was planning on finishing it tonight, but due to circumstances outside of my control, I will be unable to dedicate the time to finish it. Additionally, I have three other papers due tomorrow as well, and I have, would not have time to finish them all on time. Additionally, additionally, my sister's getting married this weekend, and I have to travel to the wedding tomorrow morning. If you would be so gracious as to give me one more week to turn it in, I fully guarantee you that the result will be more reflective of my writing potential. Thank you for your grace and consideration, Joe. If you've ever written an email, letter, or some form of a request for an extension, you know that feeling of terror that seeps in as you wonder whether you'll, your assignment will be granted that extension. And more humorously, if as a teacher you've ever received one of those requests, I imagine you can just smell the desperation oozing out of every word. And the question comes... Is the extension given? And if you're the one receiving it, what do you do with it? Today's gospel reading opens with Jesus having the opportunity to comment on two tragedies that resulted in loss of life. In the first, a group of Galileans had been brutally murdered by Pontius Pilate while worshiping, their blood mingled with their sacrifice. The same Roman governor, Pilate was, who would go on to sentence Jesus to death. And the second, 18 people were killed when a tower in Jerusalem collapsed on top of them. And so the question that's on the crowd's mind, the question that Jesus answers, why did these tragedies have to happen? Why would God let something like this happen? And that naturally morphs into, did these people die as punishment for their sin? As is our tendency as humans, there are people who reported these disasters to Jesus. We're looking for a place to put blame. Whose fault is it? And the people's first inclination was to say that the ones who died, died as a result of their sinfulness. We're no strangers to disaster and calamity in our own time, both natural and human-made. Just last week, we watched in horror as 50 were killed in their house of worship in New Zealand by a white terrorist. And much closer to home, last week, at least three have been found dead, and billions in dollars in damages have been sustained by vast flooding across Nebraska. And we still ask God, why? Why are these things allowed to happen? Why are good people allowed to be killed? Why can we not even be safe in the place where we gather to worship God? 
And sometimes we too blame other victims for the fate that befalls them. Well, they knew that hurricane was coming. Why didn't they evacuate? Well, if that kid hadn't had his hood up, he wouldn't have looked suspicious. We blame because we don't understand. And Jesus doesn't try to make the crowds who are with him understand the why of these tragedies. He just has a simple answer for the question of, did these people die because of their sin? I tell you, no. God does not reach out and punish individuals or groups of people because of what they've done. The martyrs killed by Pontius Pilate were not worse sinners than the rest of the Galileans. The ones who were killed by the tower's collapse were not worse offenders. The Muslims worshiping in their mosque were not being judged. Natural disasters happen. Human evil happens. And God weeps with us as we live through these tragedies. So Jesus' message is short and sweet about God using torture and death to punish people. Jesus says, God doesn't do that. But then he goes on. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Jesus seems to be offering these people who are following him what amounts to an extension, with their assignment being to repent. Now that seems odd after Jesus has just absolved the victims of these two tragedies from having lived sinful lives. So why is he now stressing a need for repentance for those who are still living? And he goes on to tell a story to illustrate his point. The owner of a fig tree is disappointed that the tree is not giving him any fruit and demands that it get cut down. The gardener, the caretaker of the tree, the one who's invested in the tree's life, begs for an extension for the tree. If the owner gives it one more year to bear fruit and it doesn't, the gardener promises you can cut it down at that point. The story ends here, but it seems that the owner agrees to the extension, and I'm sure the gardener gets hard at work trying to ensure that this year the tree does repent of its barrenness and bear fruit. So why does Jesus contrast the guiltlessness of the dead with the need to bear fruit with the extension that the living have been given. These two ideas may seem to be in contrast with each other, but are actually very related. Just because those people died didn't mean they were being punished for their sin. And in the same vein, just because these people Jesus was talking to were living doesn't mean that they're free from sin and being rewarded. If in their worldview a terrible death meant God's judgment, their life, their freedom, their property, everything they had meant God's approval. And Jesus said no to that. What they have in this life, everything up to and including their life, does not give them a free pass to God's favor. Just like that tree, the day will come when all of us will end. So in the meantime, Jesus says, live into repentance. You've been given an extension. Bear good fruit. Just because I received an extension on some of those emails I wrote doesn't mean I was automatically going to receive an A. I hope my professors graded the same, just as stringent or lenient on the extensions as they did on the assignments turned in on time. So I was still expected to put effort into those assignments, even if they were a little late. And Jesus asked the same of us. Use the gift that you've been given. Use the extra year before you're cut down. Use this season of Lent to repent and bear good fruit. And repentance in this gospel doesn't just mean saying, I'm sorry for things and then promising to try to do better next time. Repentance is the next step being active and working to bring God's kingdom to earth. Bear good fruit. Work to make this world into one where those disasters happen less. Don't 
assume you're better or worse than others because of your theology or actions. But your bearing fruit means living into God's kingdom. And it's this kind of repentance that gives joy and shows that you believe in the grace of God that will ensure that you don't perish at the end. So as this parable ends, the question that Jesus leaves hanging in the air is what are you going to do with the extension that you've been given?